There has been an amazing new update to Helldivers 2, and with it comes potentially the best weapon in the game and the worst weapon in the game simultaneously. So let's hell dive straight into it as I test the limits of the Laz 99 Quasar Cannon and the MG 206 Heavy Machine Gun. And of course, guys, before we begin, make sure you smash that subscribe. <clears throat> oh, God, I'm sorry. I nearly made myself sick then just trying to pretend to be that cringe. In all honesty, though, watch the video. And if you enjoy it, a like and a subscribe is much appreciated, my friends. It goes a really long way in helping the channel to grow and helping us to bring more hell divers into the fold. And on that note, let's take a look at the new Quasar Cannon. I don't want to keep you waiting, so I'll start off by sharing some of the most exciting news I've got for this whole video. And that's the fact that the Laz Quasar Cannon can one-shot the armor off of chargers. This is absolutely huge. We have been waiting for this weapon and we didn't even know it. Finally, we have a reasonably powerful support weapon that will fill in the gap left by the railgun nerf. As you can see, it just melts chargers. One shot from this strips off the leg armor, and then you can switch to pretty much any other gun in the whole entire game, and a few shots is gonna take them down. And before I talk about how it fares specifically against every other bug and bot, a few key aspects of this gun that you should be aware of, and why I believe it isn't overpowered, it's just very powerful. Firstly is because of the fact that shots do take a long time to charge. Unlike the railgun, you can't just charge it for half a second and then blast everything to pieces. It's a good three or four second charge time before it will do anything. Also, especially against smaller targets, it's not the easiest thing in the world to aim. There's a little bit of sway, and as soon as it's fully charged, it will automatically fire instantly. There's no holding on to that charge whilst you line up your aim. So if your target isn't in your sights at the second that your gun is charged, you will fumble your shot. However, on the plus side, as we've already talked about, this gun is insanely powerful. Also, because it's a laser cannon, it has infinite ammo and it doesn't require a backpack, meaning you can use your guard rovers, you can use your shield generators, and this is going to make your build much more versatile. This gun really is not very good against small or fast targets. There is no point wasting this ridiculously long charge on something like a hunter or even a warrior. However, don't be afraid to use it against brood commanders and hive guards. It will one shot both of them and you're not wasting a shot because you've got infinite ammo. Obviously, there are quicker ways to deal with them if you use something like the auto cannon or even machine guns. But as long as you aren't currently being ganked and swarmed with bugs, then I would say anything hive guard and above, this is a really solid choice because it's going to one shot practically everything. As you've already seen, it will strip the armor from a charger instantly, leaving it vulnerable to all other forms of damage. It's going to one shot your brood commanders and your hive guards. Depending on your aim and your accuracy, it's slightly less consistent with bile spewers, especially on harder difficulties when they are partially armored, but headshots will kill them. So as long as you're patient and accurate and you're not currently being suppressed by other bugs, it should almost always one shot bile spewers. But the thing that makes me the happiest is the fact that it will also one shot stalkers. This kind of goes without saying because they're definitely no stronger than hive guards, but it needed to be said specifically because these things are an absolute pain in the ass. So being able to take them out in one shot without even using any ammo feels insanely satisfying. Now, on the bugs side of things, before we move over to the bots, the most awesome, most important piece of information is the fact that it will take out bug nests. This counts as an explosive, and it can even do a small amount of incendiary damage, but most importantly, it will destroy nests. This means if you bring this weapon with you, you have an infinite, unlimited way to take out nests, which truly is invaluable to any team. That alone puts this gun in the absolute top tier of weapons. 
And before we move on to Bile Titans and bots, talking about the top tier of weapons, now that there have been so many patches, so many new weapons and stratagems added to the game, so many nerfs and buffs, I will be revisiting my list of the best weapons and the best stratagems in the game in a few days. So make sure you sub to the channel and you keep your eyes peeled because I will be dropping that shortly. Now, the only time this gun falls short is with Bile Titans. Unless you can aim absolutely perfectly at their heads, it's going to take at least three to four shots to kill them. And especially if you've only got a couple of you and the Bile Titan is actively hunting you down, this thing takes far too long to charge up for it to be effective against Bile Titans. They're just going to mosey on up to you and stomp you to death before you can do anything. Unfortunately, even though it has really good armor penetration, it doesn't have the actual damage needed to back it up, and it really doesn't do all that much to the Bile Titan. So even though it seems to obliterate everything else, please do not rely on this to try and take down Bile Titans. It's, it's one major weakness against bugs, which to me is a really good thing, because if it just worked against everything and it was far, far too powerful, then it would definitely need nerfing, and knowing the devs come next patch, this gun would be useless. However, due to the long charge-up time on the shots, due to the fact that it sucks against small targets, and another third negative that I haven't mentioned yet, it can't travel through enemies either. I tested this a few times with both bugs and bots, even if you're talking really small things like raiders or scavengers, as soon as it kills one, that beam will stop. It will not travel through and hit anything behind it as well. So due to these three negatives, these three drawbacks, I do feel like even though it's one of the more powerful weapons, it's not overpowered and it just fills a gap that really needed to be filled after that last really bad nerf that we got. Now, if I talk about this gun versus bots, as you'll already know if you've watched my videos, laser weapons are the way to go versus bots. So the fact that this is a laser cannon, in theory, it's going to be even better against bots, right? Yes, it is. This thing absolutely destroys every bot I can think of. It is so powerful against the automatons. Obviously, as already mentioned, it really sucks against small enemies, especially ones that like to get up in your face. So assault raiders, brawlers, and even berserkers are going to be terrifying for you. Especially Berserkers, actually, because it surprisingly cannot one-shot them. At first, I chalked this up to my bad aim, but I tried again and again and again, hitting them perfectly in that red dot every single time. It can take them within an inch of death, and then switching to pretty much any other weapon will kill them. But as far as I'm aware, the Quasar Cannon cannot kill Berserkers. Which again, for me, is a positive thing. If it was able to one-shot everything, it'd be far too powerful and it would get nerfed into oblivion. However, let's talk about the positives. Let's talk about what it can do with bots. Both regular and rocket devastators, they are history. You can hit them pretty much anywhere and the Quasar Cannon will one-shot them. Obviously, try and aim for the big red dot right in the middle of their face. That will absolutely guarantee you a one-shot. When you're talking about heavy devastators, they are guaranteed to go down in two shots from this gun. If you hit the shield, it will strip them of their shield and the next shot will kill them. However, if you manage to attack them from the rear or from the side, depending on the body part that you hit, you can usually one shot them, but still sometimes it will take two shots. As we talk about the bigger and badder bots, just as the railgun did, if you're good at aiming and you hit the hulks in the perfect weak spot, right in the middle of their face, this is guaranteed to one-shot them in that red dot every single time. Honestly, the more comparisons I make, the more I see that this is the railgun we should have had in the first place. It has the power of the railgun, but it has a few additional drawbacks so that it's not quite as ridiculously overpowered. So as I say, it will one-shot hulks as long as you're accurate enough. And just like with the Terminids, this thing can and will very easily take down factories. In fact, it's very hard to not kill a factory when using this laser cannon. It's very generous with its hitbox. And frequently, I find myself fumbling all my impact grenades and then just switching to the las cannon and blowing up the factories with this instead. It really is that good at taking them out. 
and it's insanely satisfying to do as well because this cannon can destroy things from ridiculously far away. I have yet to find an enemy in my line of sight that I haven't been able to reach with this laser cannon. It goes at least 100 meters, probably further. Now, again, every gun has to have a few weaknesses. Unfortunately, it cannot kill tanks in one shot, even if you hit them from the weak spot behind. It was hard for me to test on an actual tank, but as you'll know, the cannon turrets have the exact same nest that tanks have. And as you can see, when I hit the cannon turret from the back here, in the weak spot, that ventilation unit at the back, it sets it on fire and it very, very nearly kills it, but it will require something else to finish it off. So even if you hit the weak spot, it won't one-shot tanks, but it's going to significantly weaken them, meaning that one further shot or pretty much any other weapon with enough armor penetration will be able to finish it off for you. And before we move on to the next absolutely abysmal weapon, I just want to show off once more how annoyed I am that this thing doesn't kill berserkers in one shot. Honestly, I was testing with so many of them, convinced that it's my bad aim. I'm so sure this should be able to kill them if you hit them in the big red eye in the middle of their face. And it's such a weak spot on every other automaton. It kind of makes sense if it can't, but I'm just, I'm so frustrated. I swear it's me. So if anyone has been able to one-shot a Berserker with this gun, please let me know because I'm skeptical of my own testing at this point. <laughs> oh, and the one other thing I should say before we move on is the laser does love to have a little boogie with you. So Laz99 Quasar Cannon, take it away, my friend. Now, where to begin with the MG-206 heavy machine gun? I wanted and tried so hard to enjoy this weapon. I understand what they were going for, but in my opinion, it needs a far bigger magazine and at least slightly less recoil. It works on paper, and I do see what is trying to be achieved but I lost the will to live trying this out on every single enemy. So let me just show you a montage of shite while I talk you through all of the failures and drawbacks of this weapon. Firstly, as I've already mentioned, it just doesn't have enough ammo. It runs out of ammo significantly fast, and it's not because it shoots any faster than any other gun. It has an above average fire rate, sure, but it just seems to burn through ammo and the firepower you get for how quickly the ammo burns out is just not comparable in any way. It cannot penetrate any but the weakest armor. It can't get through devastator shields. It can't do any damage at all to chargers, which I understand of a machine gun, even an LMG, but a heavy machine gun? Surely it should have some armor penetration, right? But even if you disagree, and even if you don't think it should have any armor penetration, let's talk about the next of the many things wrong with this gun. As it should, when standing up, the recoil is absolutely insane. When crouched, the recoil is absolutely insane. And when prone, the recoil is still absolutely insane. Your bullets go everywhere. It is so hard to handle this gun without much, much practice. And I'm sure with much, much practice and with managing your ammo and using burst fire, you probably can get pretty accurate. The problem being, even if you do get pretty accurate, it still doesn't have the firepower to back it up. I would have thought that one bullet from this gun should be able to kill the weakest of enemies in this game. I headshot a standard MG Raider with this, and it didn't kill him. It needs two bullets to kill the weakest bot in the game. So in my opinion, even if you don't want to increase the armor penetration, which I do agree with, it needs a little bit more firepower, a lot more ammo, and it needs to be more stable when you are prone. Then this becomes a reasonable weapon, better than some, not as good as most. But at the moment, it is absolutely unusable. It's just abysmal. 
Another drawback to this weapon is the fact that you have to scope in to have any chance of hitting anything. At first, I thought my UI was bugged. Now, I know this isn't the only weapon in the game that does this, but considering you literally have to aim down sights if you want any kind of chance to hit anything, makes this even more niche and situational than it already was. Because it means if loads of enemies get up in your face, you can't just spray and pray. Because as soon as you zoom in that sight, you can't see anything. It is so hard to hit anything closer than 20 meters or so away from you. Which just adds to the list of ever-growing issues I have with this weapon. Oh, and I haven't even got to the worst part yet. Again, I appreciate this is realistic, but in comparison to all other guns, the reload speed is just abysmal. If it was a crazy powerful gun, yes, make it take like 30 seconds to reload. But the fact of the matter is, it has a very short magazine, and it can't kill all that many enemies at all before you have to reload it. Then it takes twice as long to reload as it does to actually unload the next round. That ratio to me is just far too lopsided. I do not see any redeeming features with this gun. With everything I've said about this gun so far, the optimists among us, or the people that just want an argument, are probably trying to find something positive to say about this gun to prove me wrong, and just say how stupid I am that I hate this gun so much. And please, please try and prove me wrong, I, I genuinely beg you. So the only thing I could possibly think of is that this is really good at killing swathes of really tiny little enemies, lots of hunters and scavengers, etc. The problem with that is because of the recoil and because of how heavy this is, if you try and move this gun from left to right, it takes so long to line up your shot that the hunter has already jumped out of your way again and the scavenger is already up in your face nibbling at your private bits. It's too sluggish and clunky and the recoil is just insane to be used for the one situation that I would have thought that this gun was designed for, even when you are prone. The only thing I could think that would make this gun slightly usable is if you were to also wear the armor that reduces the recoil of weapons when you are crouched and prone. But I don't feel like you should have to wear an armor just to make a weapon usable. To have the option to wear an armor to make a weapon even better, yes, that's brilliant, because you're then designing your build around that weapon. You're then sacrificing other armor perks so that you can make your primary damage output even better. But to be forced into wearing an armor just to make it usable, that doesn't sit right with me. So for now, I could not recommend this gun to anyone. However, the Quasar Cannon, that is the shit. Everyone use that. It is so good. And when I say everyone use that, I don't mean all four members of your team come in with Quasar Cannons. That would be silly. You need variety. That's what this whole game is about. But it's really, really, really good. And with that, my friends, that is everything you need to know about the two new stratagems in Helldivers 2. As I say, I'll be incorporating these weapons, all of the other recent updates, buffs, nerfs, and additions, best weapons and stratagems tier list coming out in just a couple of days. So keep your ears and eyes peeled. And for now, all that's left for me to say is thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.